Well, if Brian Cranston wants the role of the BTK killer, it's his. Uh, no one is going to look more like Dennis Rader than Brian Cranston. So, the BTK serial killer says Brian Koberger shares some of his traits, and one of his own attacks, a quadruple homicide, is eerily similar to the Idaho student slangs. Dennis Rader, who, which, who, by the way, I continue to contend that just the name Dennis Rader is scarier than the name BTK. Raider tells TMZ in a new email he believes Koberger would lie in wait for his victims, stalking them and casing their home. All of this, BTK says, was much like I did, referencing Koberger's dark mind, which he can relate to. Murder for, much like the Oteros, up close and personal, stabbed, BTK wrote. Like, do, he speaks very in clipped sentences like it does the prison charge you by how many words you put into a sentence it's odd he went on to mention that Koberger left dna at the crime scene just like he did at the otero house leaving his semen on one victim's body jesus christ took police years to link him to the crimes after the advancements in dna technology lucky fuck you did it during the time when they took a long time to link with dna technology that's the only reason you know, guys like BTK probably get this sense of, uh, you know, get a big ego because it took them so long to be caught. It's like, no, the technology just wasn't there, asshole. You would have been picked up in five weeks if you try that shit today. However, Koberger was soon connected to the homicides after DNA was found on a knife sheath. Yeah. Lastly, BTK tells us Koberger may have killed by fantasy homicide, which I did with an exclamation point. He's still excited by that. Of course, BTK was referring to his police confession that he murdered 10 people because of his sexual fantasies. I know detectives have not disclosed Koberger's motive and he denies any wrongdoing. As we reported, Koberger was rumored to have contacted BTK. Blah, 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 blah. All right. Yeah, we don't know about Koberger. I read somewhere that he never had a girlfriend. No one remembered him with a girlfriend. So Jennifer Coffendaffer the ex-FBI agent who thinks that he may have been posting on Reddit and Facebook as Papa Roger and Inside Looking, respectively, also theorized before he was caught that the killer was an incel. So she seems to be kind of... She, she's she's batting a high average here when it comes to the Koberger case. Surviving Idaho roommate Dylan Mortensen is seen outside her parents' home for the first time since it was revealed she froze in fear when she spotted the killer. I saw uh, on Jennifer Coffendaffer's Twitter again, like, you know, maybe they should have redacted Dylan's name and just said a roommate witnessed the killer because it's kind of not fair. We don't hear much about Bethany Funk, which, you know, some of you pointed out that I couldn't remember her last name. I remember it now. I hope I'm pronouncing it properly was it funk or funky either way that a lot of this pressure and speculation is coming down on dylan's shoulders because she was named as the one who saw the killer and and you know allegedly didn't call for eight hours i mean well i don't know how to put this i want to be nice i don't want to pile on her i don't want to think like she did something wrong uh we know that the call didn't come in for eight hours for whatever reason i'll put it that way She's probably scared out of her mind. Uh, I haven't responded to this comment yet. I saw a comment on my previous video saying like, oh, she just peeked out the door. Then how could she be if so? How could she have been so traumatized? Well, the thing is, she also heard the crying and she heard an unknown male voice and she heard one of her roommates say someone's here. So even if she didn't witness any blood, even it's still frightening. And then to see a guy walking through your house who you don't know, with a mask on and bushy eyebrows, that would scare anybody. Dylan Mortensen was seen at her family home in Boise, Idaho, Sunday morning after a trip to Starbucks. I'm sure they sent the paps out there. That's how they do it. The uh, like the freelance photographer guys get sent on these assignments. And it's just like go hang out there until you see him, and then just follow him and find it. You know, I never had to do this. Wow, Daily Mail. That's twice in one day that you did not spell check before you went to publication. I know you want to be first, but witness has one T. It's not witness. It's witness. Yeah, I mean, good. She should be staying at her family home right now. 
Uh, I hope she's able to find a way to get over this. She's probably feeling some kind of guilt and regret, even if it's not her fault. You know, there's the survivor's guilt. Remember, Koberger is at fault here. He did this. None of the people in the house did this. And just from a legal standpoint, the cops cleared them very early and have continued to maintain that Koberger acted alone. So if she had some kind of relationship or prior like connection, we would know. Or, or like it, it, it's like she would be. It, it would be a, a different situation. I'll put it that way. Uh, 